Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. on Wednesday, March 30, tours the crucial provinces of Davao del Norte and Davao del Sur, where some incumbent officials pick Lenny Robredo as their presidential bet. Hugpong ng Pagbabago, or HNP, the local party of Marcos Jr.'s running mate Sara Duterte, will try to shore up votes for the former senator. The Davao City Mayor says they will try their best to deliver and do more for Marcos Jr. In the 2019 elections, HNP in Davao del Norte was defeated by the slate of 1st District Representative Pantaleon Alvarez, who recently just switched support from Ping Lacson to Robredo. HNP Secretary General Secretary Anthony Del Rosario says he could not understand why Alvarez dropped Lacson for Robredo. But Tom Villarin, former representative of the Robredo allied Akbayan party list, says they will not discount Alvarez's influence in Davao del Norte. Buhay Representative Lito Atienza says he is very seriously considering withdrawing from the vice presidential race to give presidential candidate Senator Manny Pacquiao a chance to forge a stronger tandem that can beat survey frontrunners Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte. Atienza adds he hopes Senator Panfilo Lacson, who is running in tandem with Senate President Vicente Tito Soto III, would back out too. I am praying and I am hoping Ping, he, he, he already knows to the realities of his uh, political position. I hope he backs out too. And that could change the whole structure. That could completely demolish the Sara Bongo tandem. Lacson quickly shoots down Atienza's proposal, saying it is uncalled for, and suggests Atienza return to school and study good manners and right conduct or GMRC. The congressman says he wants Soto to run with Pacquiao, adding they align in terms of values. He adds he would officially withdraw his candidacy if an agreement between Pacquiao and Soto would be finalized. Soto is still in far second place to Duterte in the vice presidential pre-election surveys, while Atienza is in sixth place. Lacson is also trailing behind in the voters' preference surveys on presidential candidates and was recently dropped by Partido Reforma, who swung to support Vice President Lenny Robredo's candidacy. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. The Bayugan City Regional Trial Court in Agusan del Sur dismisses the kidnapping charges against doctor activist Natividad Castro. Castro reunites with her family after the court orders her release from the provincial jail. The government's anti communist task force, NTFL CAC, claims Castro is a central committee member of the Communist Party of the Philippines New People's Army National Democratic Front. The court finds that probable cause does not exist in the absence of evidence to prove the identity of the accused. It adds, without probable cause, the court did not acquire jurisdiction over the accused, which warrants the dismissal of the case. In dismissing the charges against Castro, the court cites denial of substantive right to due process and for lack of jurisdiction over the person of the accused. On February 18, San Juan City Police arrested Castro at her home over cases of kidnapping and illegal detention. Several groups, including the medical community and human rights groups, called on the government to follow the rule of law following her arrest. Nobel Peace Prize laureate Maria Ressa calls on lawmakers at the United States Senate to regulate American tech companies and social media giants that reward lies laced with anger and hate over facts. Ressa urges U.S. lawmakers to revise Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, saying tech companies have become an insidious tool for tyranny globally. The solution is three-pronged and remains the core pillars of Rappler. Technology, journalism, community. First, put guardrails around tech, build better tech. Second, strengthen journalism and help fund independent news. Part of the reason I agreed to co-chair the International Fund for Public Interest Media. Third, build communities of action that stand by these democratic values. 
The Rappler CEO warns the future of democracy is at stake in the battle for facts and considers this one of the most significant problems faced by journalists around the world. We cannot solve the global existential problems if we don't win the battle for facts. The platforms and the autocrats that exploit them must be held accountable and democratic governments must move faster. She spoke as well of Rappler's efforts to safeguard the Philippines' high-stakes elections in May 2022. The testimony forms part of the U.S. Subcommittee on East Asia, the Pacific, and International Cybersecurity's efforts to examine the assault on freedom of expression in Asia. Korean actors Hyun Bin and Sonia Jin are finally married. The crash landing on you couple tie the knot on Thursday, March 31, in a private wedding ceremony. The actors' agency's Vast Entertainment and MS team released the official wedding photos of the couple, along with a statement saying the ceremony will be private in light of the ongoing COVID-19 situation. The on-screen lovers confirmed their relationship on January 1, 2021. A year later, on February 10, they announced their engagement. The couple first worked together on the 2018 film The Negotiation. They reunited in the highly successful Netflix drama Crash Landing on You in 2019. In other news, Solgi of popular K-pop girl group Red Velvet tests positive for COVID-19. A Sumpi report runs the statement from SM Entertainment saying Solgi is currently in self-isolation and is withdrawing from any activities in the meantime. Red Velvet scheduled events to promote their new mini-album, the Reve Festival 2022, Feel My Rhythm, have been cancelled. 